This year's annual SciFest brought about a fantastic mix of fun and learning for everyone involved. But if you couldn't make it, don't worry, we have all the juicy highlights right here on Sci News. That's true. Now I'm sure we can all agree that we use plastic for practically everything in our day-to-day -day lives. We use it to carry our groceries, bottle our water, and pay for basically everything with just one swipe. But have you ever thought about using it as a brick? Hmm. Well, eco bricks are an amazing invention that is taking the world by storm and saving it at the same time. We had our crew go find out exactly what this product has to offer us. And you would be amazed at how such a simple design can potentially solve such a huge problem. Take a look. Today, a paradigm is spread that emphasizes buying, using and throwing away. Waste. More than 90% of the waste produced by people in Makanda is made out of plastic. And with the ongoing water crisis, the use of non-biodegradable takeaway containers has increased. Cindy Deutschman, a Makanda Revive member, has resorted to collecting rubbish to minimize littering. So what can actually be done with some of the plastic waste? Here, at SciFest Africa 2019, eco-bricks are made using readily available plastic bottles. A Coke bottle can hold an entire sack of plastic. Once packed solid, the bottle has become a reusable building block. The process of packing a bottle is long and meditative. Eco-bricks can be made freely from any available local materials. Communities are thus empowered with useful, simple and enduring structures. When the structure comes to its end, the eco-bricks can be removed, intact and be used again and again. Trevor Davis, a local businessman, first introduced the idea of eco-bricks as part of a Clean Up Makande initiative and also as a way to generate income for local people. Mr. Davis offers 2 rand 50 per eco-brick collecting them from many places and then storing them in Josa. They might be hard as we need or not. Those ones, they've been checked. So what he does is we check them, that they've been stuffed kind of hard and that they're going to have the structural integrity and then we stack them up against the wall. He plans on building a mobile home for his gardener by using an old trailer as a base and eco-bricks. But are eco-bricks really sustainable? And do people even know what they are? For what? For recycling. Recycling. And decoration. Yes. What kind of decoration? Huh? What kind of decoration? Although eco bricks may not offer the ultimate solution to non biodegradable waste, they do offer the benefits of being reusable, cheap to make, cleaning up of areas, employment opportunities, and most importantly, are pure fun. What we choose to do is really going to determine what our future looks like. We love eco bricks! I feel like I've been living under a brick not knowing about this. You need to work on your jokes. Okay, fine. Well, our next story is for anyone who feels like the school system just isn't up to scratch. Our team went to find out what strategy teachers should be using instead. Take a look. Despite being one of the wealthiest countries in Africa, South Africa still has one of the lowest ranking education systems on the continent. But new education practices may be able to turn this around. Now, when we look at the times we live in, information is exploding. Therefore, we need to have the skills to be able to absorb that information, filter through that, and distinguish for ourselves what's relevant and what's not. 
Whenever we want to teach something, we need to em embody that ourselves first. We need to set the standard, we need to set the example first before we can expect others to uh, follow our example. Protested the horse. I don't want any part of your flight to carry the rabbit on her back and swim across the river. The Crocodile River and they relate on each other for survival. However, are these practices actually implemented in the South African school system? We have all this information available uh, of how the brain learns and yet our educational system is not accommodating that for various reasons but it is not accommodating that. We are still using yesterday's infrastructure and sciences and technology for tomorrow's people. What then is the next step for the South African education system? So that is our challenge is for uh, us to align uh, the educational systems of the world. Shelley Root, an Isikosa teacher at Diocesan School for Girls in Grahamstown, explains that modernizing classrooms and keeping teachers up to date with the latest technology is no simple task and that there are other factors to consider that are out of the teacher's control. I think in terms of education, structures and stuff haven't changed much. Possibly because in a lot of time they do work. You know, you do need a classroom, you need the way classrooms are laid out. But we do obviously have a little bit more access to finances, whereas some schools aren't necessarily financially able to do what they would like to do to modernize their teaching. So they're still stuck in the old teacher standing up there, making them copy down notes from the board because they're not enough textbooks or whatever. We've moved beyond that. So I feel that um, in terms of my school, we are really are encouraged to be as creative as we can simply because we... So it seems like you actually need to interact with the material in order to learn it, which is exactly what the learners in our next segment have done. Science Cave is a group of learners from Jorza who are taking matters into their own hands. Despite not having quite the same resources as many other schools in Grahamstown, this group decided to team up with the master's student at Rhodes University to make their science dreams come true. Luckily, our team was there to capture the whole thing. Hi, I'm Ella. I'm a TV student studying at Rhodes, and Tristan and Amy and I went to Nseeka to interview the Science Cave students. SciFest is actually such an amazing opportunity for learning, but that's only for the people who get to go. It was Monday morning. The day of filming had finally come. Through the township we drove, past green fields filled with livestock and potholes from the heavy rain the night before, past the local housing that consisted of bright colours in which residences of Joza lived happily, and then finally to the local high school in Sika Ha, we would meet the children of Science Cave and hear what they had to say about their hopes and dreams about science and education. The Science Cave is the science club that was formed by myself and a, a group of students at Nzika. Um, we, we had been meeting for a bit and you know we were looking to do something a little bit more formal um, to get them some activities um, and maybe some recognition from uh, organizations that might be able to help them. Once we were allowed to enter and roam the school, it was buzzing with student life. The kids, to our enjoyment, seemed very enthusiastic to meet us and interact with us. It was a truly humbling and fun experience. Some of the members of a science cave like really are uh, teaching me more about science and giving me more information. The science cave is there to boost learners' confidence, you know, boost their social skills, you know, boost one another basically. Uh, well, science is seen as a hard thing like by many people like when they see about it, like people talking about science, like it's a hard thing, I'm going to do another subject, I'm going to change subjects, like many learners think about that, yeah. I don't know why people think science is hard, because science is not 
only based on calculations and such. Science is, you know, mainly based on imagination. That's how our great scientists, like our grade four scientists, you know, discover things. They imagine things. It's all about your imagination, people. I could think about an idea, like for example, on how to do something that could help the school around. Now, for example, like something that could clean the papers around the school, like, and then I could take that to reality. You know, be curious, curiosity. Curiosity will take you a long way, people. Be curious. There were a few ethical dilemmas with taking the children to Southwest, but after seeing the enthusiasm that Antika, when we, had to, when we actually had to go interview the children, um, we had to take them. It was, there was no option, really. The next day was the day in which the kids had been looking forward to all week. The day of SciFest, but more importantly, the day of the laser show. It was an exciting day with lots of energy and fascination from different people of all walks of life. Adventuring around Monument, looking at the different exhibits and educators and what they had to offer the youth. They're like, where you are, what you like. Oh. <laughs> What do you like? What? Um, the fact that we learned more about the community team yeah. and the laser show. Our bodies are made up of elements. So we are made up of gases, yeah. such as oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. You know what part I really loved? What part? It was the one where the boy was talking about how science is just all about creativity. Me too, because when you think about science, it's usually serious and structured, mm. you know, like Bunsen burners mm. and lab coats. Did you swing by the Cape Town Science Center workshop? No, what was that about? So basically, they brought together cosmetics and makeup and science in such a fun and innovative way. Oh, wow. Cosmetics are a mystery, and the mystery of them are revealed to children at Cyphers 2019. So, uh, chemistry and cosmetics basically they go hand in hand because you will see in the workshop we are trying to also, like I said, with the chemicals that we're using, we're trying to make sure that you will see, to be specific, most of the chemicals that we're using, they will have a carbon, and they will have a hydrogen, they will also have oxygen, which is, I think is the simplest um, elements that the kids always interact with each and every day. So now how do we align that with um, cosmetic? Because we want to develop a workshop that the kids are going to benefit from. So these elements are also important, are essential in life, like oxygen we breathe in is very important. So when you're mixing these um, elements together, getting something that is going to be um, pretty cool for the kids to, to use at home. Um, for example, we have got um, Epsom salt. This, that's one of the ingredients that we're using. So that one has got a healing effect on the skin, if you've got scratches and all that. It has found to be having a healing effect because of the magnesium sulfate that is actually there. So that was the um, main reason why we designed such a workshop. Also with the lip balm, they are actually using like um, some oils that are, have got vitamin E that is going to support their skin, support them. Because we don't want uh, something that's going to cause allergies to kids or it's not going to help them uh, healthy wise. So we're trying to run away from things like that. So basically we're trying to um, put chemistry together with cosmetics so that we can develop something that they can learn about the product table and also uh, beyond that get something, some benefits from these elements that they're learning about healthy wise. By can can not have soda and Epsom salt and Ayalaita and snow flour. Okay. It was amazing to watch the smalls making bath bombs and you know seeing that they are made from things that they have in their kitchen. So uh, cosmetic. 
science is extremely important. You want to, your lip balm to stick onto your lips and not be swallowed. You need to do some science. You want your mascara to plump up your um, eyelashes and not all stick to the brush. You need to do some science. You want your foundation to be a foundation or your spot concealer to actually conceal those spots. Then you've got to do some science to determine the right materials, the right mixtures, and uh, that is quite uh, quite difficult. This this formulation science then goes over into pharmaceuticals as well. What do I think about makeup? What well, can't you see? Oh. <laughs> With Cyphers 2019 over, we look forward to seeing what 2020 will bring up. Honestly, I'll never look at a bath bomb the same way again. Nesta, when do you ever use a bath bomb? When I prepare for a date. Oh, so what's happening in your love life? What love life? Why do you <laughs> ask? <laughs> well, because our next show is all about love. Have you ever wondered why your palms sweat or why you feel nauseous when you're around your crush? Well, we were very interested in these questions and so we sent our team to find all the answers. Love. What is love? That is a complicated question. Um, I think it is a large mix of social behaviours, learned behaviours, psychology, background, upbringing, together with hormones and specific neurochemicals in various, various areas of the brain. Research has shown that there are various chemical changes that happen when people are in love. For example, different neurochemicals are targeted to different parts of your body. Um, I'd say the main three of interest, you get, like there's adrenaline, um, dopamine, and oxytocin. So if I were to go into detail with those, um, you see that when people are in love, there's an increase in adrenaline levels. And this results in vasodilation, like you can have um, blood vessels, they increase in size and blood flows faster. And that's why people blush because there's increased blood flow to like the cheeks. You'll find that that's why people's hearts race, you know, that, you know, you skip a beat because of that, there's that adrenaline and norepinephrine. Um, yeah, so they result in those kind of changes, like your palms get all sweaty. Um, and then dopamine. Um, see now dopamine, is targeted to the reward center in your brain um, so when dopamine levels increase it's like being in love it, you get these that similar feeling that's that's where maybe you get butterflies and that fuzzy feeling inside because there's increased levels you you feel like something good is about to happen because your reward center is stimulated and then oxytocin like this one they call it the love drug what it does is it's you it's released when people like hugging and stuff it increases sense, like the sense of calmness, and it increases your, it reduces stress, and it helps like with um, social interactions, like it helps you form bonds and stuff like that, positive memories, all that is linked to oxytocin. I would say love is a drug. At first, during the relationship, it, it does feel like a drug. After a while, it, the high kind of goes down, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not prominent over a long period of time. This is something new, this is something exciting, and it's happening for the very first time. Your brain goes like, whoa, like crazy, you know, like what is this? So in that sense, you are more excited in the beginning, but um, as you go on in the relationship, um, the butterflies may not still be there all the time. You might not be ex extremely excited to see this person all the time, but you are more comfortable with them and you're always happy to see them. So the level of comfort rises as you go along and also um, your love for them does grow stronger over time. So is love real because we can't feel it? So is your personality real? Because I can't feel it. But the presence of you, who you are, what you represent, what you believe in, what you stand for, that is I can't feel that either, that's all prefrontal cortex, so it's all about how you create yourself and the different pathways in your frontal cortex. 
So you, your personality, is about pathways in the frontal part of your brain. So you can use that as an analogy to love. I mean, are you real? Are the thoughts real? Are your feelings real? Are you, and we get back to, I, you know, I think, therefore I am. Maybe it's, I love, therefore I am. That completely changed the way I look at love. That was deep stuff. I feel like I'm questioning everything I thought I knew about love. I know, same here. I feel like I need some time to process. Me too, and yeah. I think our viewers feel the same way. Okay, well then let's leave it at that. Until next time, good, good night. night. So anyway, I feel like...